Hey, what's up guys? How y'all doing today? Well, baby, if you are Sean Diddy Combs, now we see why you didn't settle, y'all. Diddy is having the worst week ever, and it seems to be worser. Baby, first of all, let me just say one thing. If you guys didn't hear, Fox News just announced what they found in Diddy's raid. Now, if you've been following this channel, baby, we already said what they found in those raids. They found, and we were the first to report it a few days ago, they uh, found bang bangs with the serial number filed off. <clears throat> Tommy Diddy wasn't running his own version of training day. On top of that, y'all, y'all know what else he found? We found over there, right? Bang bangs with the serial numbers filed off, not unregistered. The serial numbers uh, filed off. On top of that, they are said to have found many, many videos of many, many people in very, very compromising situations. On top of that, a bank that has been bankrolling Diddy's lifestyle literally aired all his business out, letting us know that he is a fake billionaire. He's even a fake millionaire. He had to leverage himself to the T to get these three luxury mansions. Now, if you look at it, why it was so important he had those mansions. Well, baby, where else is he going to have those freak off parties? Maybe Diddy was getting his money because think about it. We thought Diddy was a billionaire. Diddy did this. We know he allegedly, according to the bad boy artist, robbed most of them blind. But let's be real. What has, nobody was re, uh, wearing Sean John. He had some money in De Leon, Revolt TV, and Chirac, but how much was that bringing in? Maybe all the rumors were true, and the reason why Diddy needed all this real estate wasn't because he felt like doing anything. It was because he was using it for his parties to entertain his very, very rich friends. Ask yourself why he had two homes on Star Island, Star Island 1 and Star Island 2. Was it because one was for sleeping and the other one was for freaking? I'm just saying. <clears throat> I'm just saying. So let's actually get into this. I do want to say that Kristen Combs, two things. One, I'm going to be going live a lot today, okay? I got so much to discuss, so much inside tea. I'm not even playing with y'all. And y'all know when I tell y'all I got inside tea, I really do be having... Um, inside tea, right? Or at least stuff that maybe you'll read it here first. But second of all, Kristen Combs is posting. It's all, all the stories are all cap. Baby boy, I know that's your daddy. I know you want to believe the best for, from him. I know you want, but baby, there's a reason why y'all was sitting there putting out posts on TMZ talking about some cry me a river. Did y'all see that mess that was on TMZ? when they were talking about how mean the federal, the feds were. And I said, what in the May mess is there? If y'all don't tighten up, talking about some, I was in the middle taking a shower, I was getting dressed, and then the feds came with the red dots on my head, and they were mean to me. Man, tighten up. What in the trust fund, kid? You got your two boys out here crying because in a raid, in a federal raid, the, the, they didn't say, excuse me, what did you think this was, a fresh Prince of Bel-Air? You thought um, Carlton was going to come in? No, Jeffrey was going to come in? Um, excuse me, Mr. Combs, the federal government is there. Baby, Diddy might run whatever he thinks it runs, but baby, he don't run nothing with the feds. How are y'all sitting here crying because y'all had red dots on your forehead? Do you not know what your daddy's been accused of? I know that's your daddy, but if your friend, your mother, your brother, your lover, whoever is a, been sued and accused of blank trafficking and all this stuff. Did you not think there was a point that the feds were going to come to your door? Stop talking to your daddy about what's going on in the case because either he don't know or he don't want to tell you, but anybody could have told you them boys was going to knock on that door. Y'all should have been stayed in the Holiday Inn from jump as soon as all this lawsuits came out. You saw that mess. Anyway, that, that's just, I was in the middle of a shower. Were you, little pumpkin? Shut up and tighten up and get on the ground and assume the position. You can't be hanging around people. That's like hanging around people accused of moving weight and then being like, and then the feds came in and they were very mean. Yes, yeah, what they do. It's called deterring crime. That's what they do. Anyway, right? Okay, so let's get into this because it looks like one of the banks has said, oh, no, 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 no. 
No, 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 no. You about to go down and we want our money. How's this all tied in? Remember how I was like, why didn't he just settle with Cassie? And then when those complaints came out, he ran out and settled. And then I was like, but then with the little rod, that's even worse. Why haven't you settled? Maybe the banks are exposing that Diddy might be too, break, uh, too broke to settle. And even though it was on a higher scale, he was living paycheck to paycheck, which actually might be why he needed the blanchual blackmail, right? It might be why he needed to do all these favors. It might be why he kept all that to either blackmail people or to pressure people into doing deals with the record industry. Or maybe he did it to please whoever was really funding his lifestyle. If you guys do know, Diddy really, really blew up when he got with Ron Burkle. The billionaire Burkle is going down with this Urkel. Urkel. Okay, fine, right? Y'all know I can't resist. But you know, like this mess that's going down with uh, Ron Burkle. Ron Burkle got his own problems, but it looks like that might be where Diddy learned these violent delights got violent ends. Let's get into this really quick. Hold on, y'all. Let, let's pull up. Can we pull up this article? Maybe, maybe, maybe. Hold on, y'all. Let's see if I can pull up this article. So anyway, the banks have started leaking and they said, no, baby, first of all, you wasn't even worth what you thought you were worth. You had to leverage everything you to do, get those three houses. And guess what, baby? On top of that, we are demanding and we mean demanding above all things necessary that you will pay us. Okay. And we want our money today. It looks like Diddy's little house of cards actually is going down. And it looks like he don't have no one. And I mean, no one to save him. Let's get into this. This is just sad, sad, sad. The saddest case on land and sea. Okay, hold on, y'all. Really? Where is this mess? Really quick. Hold on, y'all. Let me just get in to this. And one second. Okay. So sorry for this little interlude. How y'all doing today? Happy Friday to everybody. I know y'all glad the week is over. At least I hope you are, unless you don't want to go home to whoever you're going to, unless you won't, don't want to go home to whoever you go home to. Okay, let's get this, all right? Let's get it. Okay. Okay, here we go. So the Daily Mail is reporting that all these people, and I've said this about the Kardashians for a minute. I'm not saying that they working at Walmart. No shade if you're working at Walmart. Y'all know, y'all get what I'm saying. But I am saying that all this stuff about people being billionaires, it's grossly inflated. I've always said there's a lot of fake billionaires that are just glorified marketers and endorsement deals. OK, look at Chloe with Good American. It just came out by that girl that's suing Good American. They fired somebody that had cancer. The girl that's suing Good American, let it be known that Chloe is not one of the owners of Good American. She's nothing but a, 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 a glorified Instagram model. Right. Like we found out when Diddy went through the lawsuit with Daily on and Chirac, that that was not his company at all all, but he was just paid to promote it. And for whatever reason, they like promoting it to make it look like it's like black owned. You know what I'm saying? But let's get into this. Okay. Let me put this on the summer dram screen, brother love. Uh, if brother love can please come to the front of the congregation. Okay. This is it. Did he owes them to bake nearly a hundred million dollars and they want their money now because get this, he took out eight mortgages on his three extravagant homes in Los Angeles and Miami that were raided by Homeland Security. So even the bank was like, yo, what is going on? Diddy has eight mortgages out on his three homes. That means that for the past few years, Diddy has been living off of the mortgages from his house. He took out over a hundred, he took out eight mortgages to fund the purchases for his three luxury mansions in Los Angeles. He borrowed almost $150 million. 
And guess what? He owes them still a hundred, a hundred million, and they want their money now. Why? People are saying this is connected to um, the properties that were raided by Homeland Security as part of the human blanketing investigation. So let me get this straight. Star Island one and two, Diddy had one home for sleeping and was the other one for freaking because why did you have two homes and, and they were both luxury estates? I've heard about the parties that happened in uh, Diddy's mansions. And all I got to say is um, it was giving Sodom Gomorrah. It was given mm, what you do in there. It was giving, I guess you flying girls out from the Midwest because all the city girls know what's up. No pun intended. Yo, did you see Carisha? She is on Twitter doing a Meek Mills crashing out. Now she's trying to tell us that we just believe in everything. She wasn't paid no 200 million a month by Diddy, but she has not answered were you a blank worker? Because if you were, I hope you was paid 200 million a month. I hope you wasn't doing something strange for some change, put on one leg up for like um, a little Debbie oatmeal cream pie, half a Snapple and whatever was left on a Newport cool menthol cigarette. I hope you're getting paid for this. I really do. Anyway, right? They said Diddy has borrowed an eye warding a hundred million from multiple banks. So let me get this straight. He went to one bank, maxed out what they would give him when they looked at what his assets to debts were. And then he went to another bank because one bank was like, no, nah, we cutting you off. He kept going to bank after bank after bank. Again, why is this important? Because one, it lets you know a couple of things. Once we just keep this in mind. I keep saying, how come you didn't settle for with Little Rod? How come you're not settling with all these people? It never occurred to us that Diddy doesn't have the money to settle. When Diddy um, liquidated his uh, assets in revolt, when Diddy literally liquidated what his ownership interest, which was none, well, very little in De Leon and Chirac, we thought he did it because he was trying to hide money overseas. And he might still be. Don't get me wrong. I ain't putting nothing past Brother Love. But the thing is, Diddy, when I get into this article, according to the Daily Mail, was doing a high scale paycheck to paycheck. And it was working as long as nobody asked for their money due. This also might have been why he didn't settle with Cassie right off. And maybe when he gave Cassie that money, that's when everything started to fall down. Because you're living basically paycheck to paycheck. You got a lot of red friend, rich friends. You know how it is when you got money. People give you free things, free drinks. They let you stay there free. Everybody want to give you something free when they think you're rich, right? Look at the way people are literally kissing the feet of power with Diddy because they think even through all this, well, there might be something I can get from him, right? And he had a bunch of rich friends that so would be like, okay, this and that. But when it came to something that nobody would buy him, unless your name was Clive Sugar Daddy Davis, right? That nobody, your homes, what, the way people treat their homes and cars, that's why people look at it as assets because what did you have to do to get that home? Can you comfortably afford the mortgage? Where did this come from? Same thing with car notes. Everybody, well, not everybody, but you can pop up with a Gucci purse. You can pop up at fancy parties. You can pop up decked out and head to toe, Prada, Gucci, Versace, whatever you want, because a lot of that stuff is just loaned from the stores. Your stylists get it off the rack. They put it on you. And then when you're done wearing it, they take it to the dry cleaners and then it goes right back on the Neiman Marcus floor. You don't believe me? Google what happens with stylists. They loan out the clothes, they clean the clothes, and then they send it back and they put tags and they put it on the floor. Sometimes it's resold. Sometimes it's resold as discounted, like in the sales item. But the point is you get the point. So when you see all these trappings, what really does Diddy own? It seems like his house of cars and this fortune he said he had doesn't really exist because I don't care what y'all say. Ain't no billionaire in the world taking out eight mortgages at different banks just to secure properties. Because honestly, and I'll be real with you, if you are a billionaire and if you don't know how much a billion dollars is, go watch that TikTok video where they show a grain of rice and they say, yo, every single grain of rice is a hundred thousand dollars. This is how much a billion is. And then they said, imagine every grain of rice is a hundred thousand dollars. And then they take a 20 pound bag of rice 
and they dump it on the floor and you see that pile. And then from there, they dump about 86 more 20 pound bags of rice on the floor. And every grain of rice is a hundred thousand. And they say, that's how much a billion dollars is. So please don't come at me. Oh my God, billionaires take out loans too. Yeah, here's the thing. Even if billionaires do take out loans, right? They borrow against their stock options. Usually there's a bunch of stuff that happens, but forget all that, right? On top of that, you don't have to go to eight separate banks because one bank, if you're a billionaire, will see your assets, two liabilities, your asset to debt portfolio and say, yeah, okay, fine. We'll give you the 140 million, just that one bank because you have enough assets to cover that, okay? Anyway, let's get into this, all right? They said, he's borrowed an eye-watering 140 million from multiple banks to pay for his extravagant property empire, raising questions as to whether he does he really have a one billion dollar fortune? Judging by the way, little Rod's lawyer is dog walking him along with D Douglas Wigmore. I would imagine the answer to that is no, he does not. But what do I know? I'm just a blogger giving you my opinion. Also, to let you guys know, Diddy has we got to do the disclaimer Diddy has declared he is 100% innocent. He said, We are all. Haters, little Rod is a liar. The government is out to get him. And guess what, baby? Christian Combs came out and said, baby, this is all cap in a very poignant and touching Instagram post. He even put the cap emoji. And on top of that, Daphne, Diddy's alleged um, uh, 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 blank worker, free golf worker, um, said, what is it was your son that was handcuffed? First of all, what if it was my what? <laughs> yeah. Um, I thought a freak off worker said something, right? But she says that like everybody's innocent. Young Miami out here fighting for her life saying little Rod's a liar because that stuff she said about him, her bringing Diddy, ah, 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 can't be true. I'm researching some stuff. I put my ear to the street. We about to expose that too. Young Miami, I don't even understand what that young Miami is not even at all the intended victim. So if you're not the intended victim, then why? What, well, not even that you're not even the attendant target. So if you're not the attended target, then why? Oh, why? Oh, why are you at all even weighing in on this? Like, why are you trying? He's, you're not. Why are you trying to catch a stray? You're throwing yourself in front of it. It almost doesn't make a difference. OK. So let's get back into the story, right? They said it could be, they said Diddy's mountain of debt could be the biggest home loan amount ever, ever taken out by a Hollywood star as the 54-year-old, wait, Diddy's only 54? I've been calling him old man river and 60 years old all this time. Mm. Well, then Diddy's body shouldn't be looking like that if he's only 54. He got like, I don't know. I don't know. He needs to lay off that daily on in Chirac. Anyway, right? But I'm sure the stress has, you know, hopefully. Oh, you know what? This makes me think that maybe that whole thing about his belly is true. Because um, at the end of the day, that belly is bellying. I'm just saying, you know what? I'm just saying, hold on. Uh, one second. One second. Okay, so. Uh, let me pull up this article again. I keep losing it. Okay. They said that this could be the biggest home loan amount ever taken out by a Hollywood star. <laughs> you think that, yo, do you, listen, what are we, YouTube, do you think we should, could all band together? How many people are in this chat? 8,500? Listen, do you think we can all band together and maybe get, um, I don't know, can we buy his properties when they go on foreclosure? I'm going to be there right there bidding. We have 30 million, 30 million, 30 million. And I'm going to be like, we can all just sit there and bid on this property. Anyway, right? Um, they said he needed several mortgages to fund the purchase of only three mansions in Los Angeles and Miami. Now, all three were raided on Monday by Homeland Security after mounting uh, blank harassment and blank lawsuits with agents ransacking the homes. We all heard Justin and Tristan, Kristen, um, 
crying about it. I was in the shower. They were mean to me. I wasn't even dressed. Man, take your wave cap off and come to the front of the yard and put these handcuffs on. I know the federal agents were like, these rich kids got something coming. Man, no, no, get your ass into the yard and sit down on these handcuffs. Anyway, right? And they said, after mounting, so blah, blah, the agents ransacked the homes, taking away boxes and bags of evidence. Again, Fox News has confirmed what we told you three days ago on this channel. They found bang bangs with the serial numbers filed off, and they found a bunch of videos on a lot of people in very compromising situations. On top of that, there are communications that they know of that they now have the electronic devices that they are trying to confirm on the electronic devices. Baby, something's coming down the river for Diddy. I am going live a bunch today, so make sure you subscribe and turn on your notifications. Also, you guys, there's like 8,800 people in these uh, in my chat, I don't even want to look at the likes because y'all always be playing me. I'd be having like 10,000 people in my live and like 59 likes. Y'all just love playing me, having, having like freak offs. Y'all just love playing me. But if you guys can hit the like button, it will help this um, live grow. Uh, share it. And don't forget to subscribe and turn those notifications on. All right. Anyway, they said nearly 100 million is still owed by uh, the rapper, producer, and entrepreneur, which is due and Ron Burkle, sugar baby, which is due, right? Which he needs to pay them back ASAP. The first one is 23 million that needs to be settled. Now, this is what he took the loans out on. If you got, again, why is this so shocking? Because people that know business know that you don't have to scramble around to different lenders to get mortgages, eight different places to get mortgages, but let's keep going, right? Let's keep going. Um, they said in 2022, Forbes estimated that Diddy, um, who has seven children with four different women, was estimated to be worth one billion. I think it's also important to say this. Um, are we, who's gonna be the first to call Forbes out? Forbes just be making up mess. We should have known when Forbes told us that Kylie Jenner was a billionaire and then got exposed because it's kind of like, all right, because I don't know what's in Kylie's pockets. I said, all right, maybe like the internet was going crazy over Kylie Cosmetics. A billion is a lot of money, but I'll give the benefit of the doubt. But then Forbes, if you don't remember, got mad because they found out Kris Jenner played them. How did that happen? Kris Jenner, according to Forbes, gave them fake profit and loss statements, fake, um, um, uh, uh, profit statements, fake income tax returns, fake everything. They found out that basically Chris Jenner had given them literally, and this is what I mean about the rich and famous scams happen on every single level. The famous people want to fake like they rich and the rich people are desperate <clears throat> insert Jeff Bezos, to fake like they're famous. The sex symbols want to be taken seriously. The people that take are taken seriously want to be sex symbols. Everybody wants what they don't have. The grass is greener, right? So Forbes then wrote an article debunking Kylie is not a billionaire, saying that we were given fake documents, fake tax returns, fake everything, the same way people be given fake uh, pay stubs. To get um to get apartments and to get cars is the same thing Chris Jenner did to get Kylie on the billionaire thing. Now I know Forbes thought they were playing Kylie, but really it made me side eye Forbes because I'm like, if somebody gives you fake income documents, then why wouldn't you have them sign off to get permission? Because you can sign off to be like, okay, do we have permission to go to the IRS and verify these documents? They didn't do any of that, so it made me think. All this time when you're saying who's worth a billion, who's not, this is nothing but you just taking people's PR agents for their word for it because you don't investigate anything. So when Diddy says he's worth a billion, when Ye said he was worth a billion, when all these people were saying they were worth a billion, what's really real? Because Forbes, just like when Forbes decided they didn't like Ye, they started dogging them, talking about, yeah, you only were 400 million. But in the uh, in the words of the honorable, the most honorable Louis Farrakhan, if a billion dollars can disappear overnight, was it ever really real? Think about it. 
if uh, even the stuff about skims being worth four billion, it's uh, where, how, and you posting June's journey online, and literally anybody, somebody says, "Hey, can you like?" Anyway, it don't matter. But again, I will say one thing: we need to stop listening to Forbes because they are the ones that truly seem to be the ops and the weakest link. Anyway, um. So Diddy purchased an L.A. home for $39 million in August 2014, situated in the celeb enclave of Homely Hills. It has eight bedrooms, 11 bathrooms, and an underwater swimming tunnel that connects to a grotto. Now, there were rumors that they actually found tunnels in Diddy's house. I wonder if they're talking about the underground swimming tunnels. I don't know. You walk into the, um, what is it? You walk into the underground swimming tunnel and it looked like one of those deleted scenes from what's that movie Lupita uh, uh, Longo was in, no, no Longo was in, where she played like it was two people where she paid like a crazy version of herself and the other one, the others or something like that, or you, I don't know. Lupita Longo, it was a Keenan Pill uh, movie. Them, is it them? Is that what it is? Them? Again, let me find out those underwater, the underwater water tunnel. Did he be walking through and he was like, mm -hmm. drain this out. But why, Mr. Combs? Drain it out. And also, can we put some some chains, some shackles down here? And everybody was like, what? No, you know, it's just it's just for a movie I'm doing, you know. And again, again, us. There we go. Thank you all. Thank you, Lammy. Thank you, Shankia. Thank you so much. Thank you, Wiz. Um, and thank you, Ben, on top of the draft pick. Yes, us. Literally, let me find out, did he drain that mess? And when you walked in, he talked about you want to come for a swim in the pool. And you like, mm, you know, she's probably like what young Miami was thinking. Mm -mm, about to, this, uh, walk into that house like this, mm, all this going to be mine. Mm, yeah, we go together real bad until he invited you to the underground pool grotto. And you were just like, why are there shackles on the floor? <laughs> and some like dead fish flopping. <laughs> like, Oh my. Meanwhile, Diddy got his, uh, according to Little Rock, got his assistant passing X and stuff out. And you just like, I don't want any champagne. I, I, you know, meanwhile, he's like, oh, you don't drink. And he trying to spike your bottle of Perrier. Well, have some sparkling water. No, thank you. Yo, do you know what my girlfriend told me? You know how it's always this thing that in the VIP, they always got champagne. Let me know if y'all know this, because I know sometimes y'all be laughing at me. Yes, I do have very provincial taste, right? I don't care what y'all think. I, like, I've seen some things, but apparently there's still a whole wide world to see. So you know how when you go into the VIP and the guys are always like, yo, you want some champagne? You want some champagne? One of the reasons why there was a bottle of champagne for the girls is what Mark Curry said, and a bottle of champagne for the guys is the fact of they were spiking the champagne bottle that was supposed to be with the girls. But uh, Mark Curry was leaving out half of that. Don't lie, Mark. You know there was a champagne spike for the boys, too. Because leave it to Diddy, he seemed like he preferred them boys, right? Literally. <laughs> Somebody told Diddy. That's probably why he wasn't taking the raid seriously. Somebody totally told Diddy, yo, you better watch out before them boys run up on you. And he was like, mm, I like the way that sounds. <laughs> <laughs> Where are these boys coming from? What they look like? Did he probably misinterpret it when somebody was trying to like give him a shout out? But anyway, apparently the reason why they liked putting it in champagne as opposed to anything else is not because, oh, girls prefer champagne. It's because, and read up on it, when you put whatever that stuff is, I don't know exactly what it's called, but let's call it a roofie or whatever. When you put it in champagne, for some reason, the taste of champagne and the bubbles of champagne completely disguise the taste. And you can't tell that it's spike. If somebody was to take taste a glass of spiked champagne and a glass of real champagne, which by the way, I hate champagne. It all tastes yucky. The only champagne I actually like, have you guys ever had like, Moe ice or something like that, or mo no, sorry, Moe nectar. There we go. It's like a sweet champagne. It tastes like somebody poured a gallon of sugar. I guess it's supposed to be like low classy, but that's my shit because I don't be liking champagne. It'd be like, ugh, it tastes like beer. Not ugh. anyway, right? But again, you cannot tell the difference between spiked champagne and regular champagne because the bubbles hide the taste. And that's how champagne is really popular with people that are a little freaky. So I'm just saying, 
from now on, ladies, make that man buy you a bag. If you in the VIP section and he offers you a drink, say, hell no. You get up and you walk to the bar and you buy your own $25 martini. I'm telling you, I'm telling you that $25 is going to save you $50,000 in therapy. I am telling you. But also make that man buy you a bag because they can't maybe, I, they can't roof your bag. I'm just saying they bad about it. Anyway, let's get back into this, right? Where was I? Oh, yeah. Dragon Diddy for being broke. <laughs> the banks exposed them. They said it's been sad. Oh, also, you guys hit the like button and subscribe. Y'all know I'm trying to grow. It's YouTube. Yes, I am going to keep begging. But honestly, it's free. And turn your notifications on because I am going to be going alive a lot today. Okay. They said, um, um, actually, when I get off here, I'm going to go live in um, a half hour or 45 minutes after I get off here because I'm waiting for my connect to get back with me because they swear they have evidence that young Miami has been exposed, was caught lying, trying to cover up with Diddy with all that mess she was talking about. I, I don't understand Miami. Like, girl, we're giving you the benefit of the doubt. The exit sign is over there. Why are you still defending that man? Are y'all still messing around? Are you still on payroll? I got questions. <laughs> you know, we're going to find the answers. Okay. Then that same house that he got has been saddled with two mortgages from the Bank of America, both for $25.35 million. So let me get this straight. Diddy bought the house for $39 million. He then took out two mortgages, right? Both of the mortgages were exactly $25.35 million each, and neither appears to even been paid off. The former is due to repay, be repaid very, very shortly. So what does this mean? Diddy's been living off of his homes. How much money does Diddy really have? Or does he just throw parties? Is he just doing another thing of hood rich? I know what everybody said, he stole bad boy publishing rights, but how much are the publishing rights still worth? And he burnt through a lot of money. The whole, one home was only worth 39 million right? And you took out 50 million in mortgages. Now, don't get me wrong. Of course, the home value has gone up in a little bit over nine years. However, that means that Diddy's home, if he was to sell it today, and let's just say the home is now worth with inflation, all stuff, 140 million, or well, that's impossible, right? Let's say it doubled in value to 80 million. That means that Diddy has zero equity in the home. That means that if he was to sell, he would get nothing out of that home. Again, what is he doing with that 50, 60 million that he took out? It looks like he's been living off of it. Do billionaires regularly live off of their home equity? But that's just for one home. Let's get into his other stuff. This bank is mad. They saw Diddy's houses were raided and they'd be like, oh, oh, mm, 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 we want our money. We, we, we want our money money and they're exposing to anybody that would loan to him after this that he is a faux billionaire they said two mortgages were also taken out when he bought his waterfront nine bedroom 12 bath pad um for 1.4 14.5 million from sony music head tommy matola right now, interestingly enough, Tommy Mottola was also credited with being an absolute monster. I'm not going to get into it, but I think there's a reason why Mariah Carey lost her mind. And if you also listen to Mariah Carey's stories of what Tommy Mottola did to her, it was the saddest, saddest things I've ever seen. Again, listen to the stories. I think Mariah's been trying to tell us for a while. Okay, then they said, right, it appears there were financial constraints Listen, I love when financial people try to call you a broke, 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 brokey joke. It appears there were financial constraints <laughs> at the time for Sean Combs. That's what I'm saying. And that mofo, that ninja was broke. I want to hit you, y'all, fellas, if you are, no, not even fellas, ladies, if you ever have to explain that you don't got it, please, if your friends invite you out to a party and everybody got to pay, um, 800 each for whatever, just hit them back with, um, it appears there are financial constraints at the time. And then say what you got to say, hit them with the financial, I'm broke. They said, as one of the loans, 
a balloon mortgage for 1.5 million is from previous is from Tommy Matola and had to be pay, paid back within two months. The second one was for 7.25 million with city mortgage and that's due. It became more complicated two years later in February, 2005, when he initially borrowed a further 22 million, I'm sorry, is that 2005? Wait, I got the date wrong, but it doesn't matter. Let's just go to the thing where it initially, where he initially borrowed a further 22 million from HSBC Bank USA. And the move was so risky. <clears throat> and I will say, let me just read this back. Okay. He took a balloon mortgage for 1.5 million. If you guys don't know what a balloon mortgage is, that is basically saying that you will take a mortgage for a short period of time for basically zero or a very low interest rate and a low uh, repayment. So let's just say a mortgage for 1.5 million uh, should be, I don't know, 50,000 a month, right? But you say, well, maybe not 50,000. It should be 10,000 a month, right? But you say, yo, can I get, and it'll be 10,000 a month for 30 years, right? And you're, they're like, no, we're not doing this with you. So then you're like, okay, I'll take a balloon. Balloon means that maybe the first year, maybe even the first two years, you will get a 0% interest rate. And maybe they still might only let you pay $10,000. However, everything's due at the predetermined specified time, which is usually about two or three years in, and you must pay all of it then or you lose everything. If you guys don't know, balloon mortgages are one of the reasons why there are big housing crashes, not because of the people that actually used it for their first home, because uh, studies show, especially when it comes to middle class, working class, whatever, people that live in their homes and it's their only home, they actually pay their rent. They pay their mortgage because your home is your most important thing. Not just because there's pride, but because who wants to be homeless? You know what I'm saying? You, a working class person has to get really, really, really bad down in the dirt. And I'm not saying it doesn't happen because life's rough, but you have to be really to let your home go. Do you know what I'm saying? That's usually the last thing that get, goes. Even cars will be repossessed before you let your home go. However, in the 2008 mortgage crisis, what happened was people that could afford to have investment properties, their second and third homes, but they were investment properties because the real estate market was picking up. When the real estate market popped and you couldn't find a way to rent it out, they took balloon mortgages because they're like, oh yeah, I'll make my money early and then I'll pay it off. But anyway, I'm getting off topic, but y'all y'all know what I'm talking about. Y'all get the points. Anyway, right? So he took a $1.5 million loan, right? He took over Tommy Matola's previous loan. Um, and oddly enough, Tommy Matola was the one that loaned Diddy 1.5 million, if that wasn't clear. So he took a balloon loan on the property. So you got all these different mortgages on the property. You still didn't have enough. Tommy Moptola had to loan you 1.5 million so you could buy the property. But let's keep going, right? Um, I'm going to read the super chats in one second, y'all. Um, mm, 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 mm. The second he had to take a loan from 7.25 million from Citibank, right? The third one he borrowed, and that was the most complicated one, but complicated. He initially borrowed um another wait, he borrowed another 22 million from HSBC Bank USA. And the move was so risky on the bank's part that Diddy had to personally act as the guarantor. Again, he was trying to put this in his music, bad boy, all this other stuff. They were like, nah, baby, this loan we're giving you is so risky that you need to be a personal guarantor. You cannot put it in your business name. You cannot put it in this. Why was it risky? Because they saw what Diddy had. And they said, even in the best of times, given all his assets, he does not have enough to make good on this loan. He just says it. However, it looks like he leveraged his contacts and the loan went through. Now, let's get into this. Now, again, they said that he was able to pay off some of the home loans, right? But he was fixing up others to put in their place. So what he would do was he would somehow get one big lump of money, pay off that loan, but he only did it so he could get even more loans on other properties. 
For instance, in June 2018, he borrowed $18.85 million from a different lender, um, which he, and four months earlier, he borrowed another $18.5 million with the same bank. Y'all, those loans still need to be settled. For one of his Miami properties, uh, he took out five mortgages, totaling 68 0.45 million of that. The mansion next door was purchased in July 2021 from Gloria and Amelia Estefan. Come on, baby. Come on, baby. Do the go go. Okay, fine. Any longer. Mm -mm -mm. Okay, fine. I'll stop and get to work. Okay. Um, uh, it had 10 bedrooms and six baths. Uh da -da 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 -da. Okay, with that, he only has one loan for $20.7 million. That means across Diddy's Los Angeles and Miami homes, he's taken out eight mortgages worth $140 million, actually $139.85 million, of which almost $100 million is currently due. They're also saying he's likely to have other properties in his native New York and possibly elsewhere. Because if you guys don't know, Diddy has properties in his kid's name. He has it in his business names. He has this. They go on to say that he bought an abandoned mansion on the outskirts of Atlanta and Sandy Springs, right? Um, the home was completely dilapidated. He was hoping to renovate it, but he wasn't able to get the necessary funding. By that time, nobody wanted to fund with him. Now, here's some real tea. I've been hearing rumors for years out of Atlanta, and I do have to let you know that these are rumors. I literally, a few years ago, thought like, come on, y'all doing too much. Around the 2003, four, five, remember when BMF was all in Atlanta and that money was flowing, right? Okay. I heard those rumors way, well, not way back then, but I heard about like them being from way back then, right? But in the current times, people have been saying that Diddy has been running a sophisticated meet and greet service between pretty young things, a meet and greet service uh, between pretty young things, rappers, ball players, businessmen, billionaires. Take it for what you want, right? Here's the real gag, and this might be why Misa went crazy. I've been hearing rumors for a while that Christian, I'm sorry, not Christian, Justin, um, was running one of the meet and greets for the Pretty Young Things. Again, Diddy had his children completely involved in stuff. There has, I'll leave it at that because I don't need to put 20 on Tim, but Let's see what happens with the rage, what actually comes out. And it's funny how he bought this dilapidated mansion in Atlanta. And this was around the time that, you know, Diddy's Angels was really starting to pop off. But for whatever reason, something happened and he decided not to renovate. Anyway, right? Um, the abandoned mansion has a pool that's turned murky green and it appears Diddy sold the place. Oh, he sold the place for half of what he paid for it. Again, could be nothing, but it's funny how they thought they were going to put up shop, but maybe Star Island was the one that ran out because if you guys don't know, that's also where Jonathan Adi, who some people say might be in witness protection. I don't know about that, but Jonathan Adi in 2014 um, said he was working for, well, he said it in a 2018 police interview, which they skipped over. Go and watch my channel if you don't know what I'm talking about that he said that Diddy and Cassie regularly paid him for free calls. Diddy and Diddy was always high on his own supply. Diddy and Cassie did this, that, and the third. On top of that, um, he said that Diddy used his private jet to move weight around. Let's also not forget when, when it comes to Diddy's private jet moving weight around, the feds are literally demanding subpoenas for Diddy private jet logs because they found out that Diddy's private jet logs would have him on the past passenger manifest, but he wouldn't be on the plane and the plane would be flying all over the place. That is illegal. So now they're trying to look at where was the plane flying? What was the plane doing? Let's also not forget in the live that I did before, we were talking about what happened in Belize. There have been rumors, and they're saying the feds are looking into it, that Diddy has some type of 
going on back and forth between loading stuff in planes, taking them to Belize, and Belize is like, and then bringing stuff back to the USA. It's used on this private plane. Now, why is that important? Well, one, the feds are allegedly looking into it, but two, when you think about it, why would Belize let that happen? Those of you that saw the live already know where I'm going, but let me have my suspense, okay? So they're like, well, why would Belize let that happen? Like, it's very hard and you coming in, ah, 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 because who's from a prominent political party in family in Belize? Who has deep political connections in Belize? Who was in the running to be prime minister of Belize? Who's involved in the government of Belize? And who took the rap for Diddy in back in whenever it happened, 2000, whatever, in that nightclub shooting? Who took the rap? If your answer is Shine, you would be right. Isn't it funny that Shine that took the rap for Diddy, according to the girl that actually got uh, hit in the mouth, right? She swears it was Diddy, not Shine, and she wants the case reopened, as a matter of fact. Um, the girl that did that, uh, that says that, no, it was Diddy, Shine just lied about it. Shine took the rap for Diddy, was quiet, stayed in jail. I guess Diddy paid him off or whatever. Never talked bad about Diddy. Went back to his home country. Got He was already from a political family, I think. Got back involved in politics. And now Diddy's plane is going back and forth to Belize, moving and dropping stuff. I don't know. I don't know. Take that for what you will. Take it for what you will. Let me just get into these super chats real quick. Why I'm doing that, this will be a good time to hit that like or subscribe button, okay? Vern, thank you so much for becoming a member. Uh, C. Simon, thank you so much for the super sticker. Kathy Isler, thank you so much for the super chat. Oh, uh, C. Simon, thank you again for blessing me twice with the super sticker. Charlotte Degree said, them bang bang got bodies, just saying. Charlotte Degree, let me tell y'all something. I saw Training Day just like you. And one thing I learned from that movie, baby, you don't fall off that serial number for nothing. Murder. I see blood, blood, wow. You know the games. One blood, da, 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 da. one blood, yeah, yeah. Okay, fine, I'll stop. I see blood, blood. Okay, anyway, yeah, them bang bangs must have bodies because why else you file the serial numbers off? You guys have security guards. Your private security guards can carry guns. You ain't got to uh, 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 file off any serial numbers on a bang bang. Anyway, I agree with you. Hey, Kenneth Thompson, thank you so much for the super chat. We also have Monica B's beginner looks. Thank you so much for the super chat. Long gone. Oh, thank you for gifting five memberships, y'all. Everybody say thank you. They got a membership too long gone. Thank you for gifting memberships to the crowd. I appreciate that. Annette Arties, thank you so much for the super chat. And long gone, you get it five. Thank you, Long Gong. Uh, Kim Carter, thank you so much for the super chat. What's up, Kim? Um, it is what it is, uh, said the Puff from Wall Street. I know that's right, the Puffs from Wall Street. Also, we got Nessa Williams. Thank you so much for becoming a member. And one lady sparkle, uh, sparkle legend, 111, thank you so much for being a YouTube member. And joining the Tattletales, you are the newest, youngest Tattletale member. Long Gone said, Tisa bringing the facts. 12K people watching, hit that like button. It's free. Thank y'all. Y'all just be playing me. I think y'all like me. The look of like, you know, y'all like me looking like Puffy when the Fed, no, not Puffy, Christian and Justin when the Feds popped in looking happy, sad, concerned, scared, angry, and shocked all at once. That's the way y'all just like me looking. Anyway, right? That's how I look when I be seeing how many people like. When it be like, you have 100,000 people in your chat and there's like 60 likes. And then when I'm like, can y'all please like, it goes up to 62. And I'd be like, y'all be trying me. But I got love for y'all. So it's all cool. I'm happy y'all here. It is what it is, said Puff Steen. That's right. Puffy Epilator, you better do it. Thank you for the super chat. Also, Jeanette Brown, thank you for becoming a member. Danielle Newton, thank you for becoming a member. We also got Stephanie Bozeman. Thank you for becoming being a member for one month. Stephanie said, Diddy is taking his children to straight in the air, and I haven't asked about it. Really? You think so? Diddy's taking his children to straight in the air. And I'm at, well, I think I think what you're saying about it, that Diddy's trying to use his kids so we would have a better or a higher opinion of them. 
baby, you gonna have to do more than trot out your adorable little daughter. You know that little girl he got, she's so cute, right? You have to do more than try out an adorable little daughter to beat what this is. Cause baby, yeah, Diddy, no, nice try. That 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 was pre little Rod. That was maybe even if you had kept a low profile after Cassie, maybe that would have happened. But that ain't happening now. Also, Mimi Lewis, thank you so much. Oh, for that generous super sticker, I appreciate that. Pretty proud Jamaican, I know that's right. Um, thank you so much for the super sticker. And Blue Moon, thank you so much for the super sticker. I appreciate all of you guys so much. So let me jump back in to this article, right? But um, um, uh, I will say, Diddy, again, we kept saying, uh, I will say this, we kept saying that why wouldn't Diddy settle? It might actually be that Diddy don't got the money to settle. But if he don't got the money to settle, why can't he borrow it from Clive? Why can't he borrow, borrow it from Ron Burkle? Ron Burkle is worth like at least 20, 30 billion, right? So imagine 89 uh, bag, 20 pound bags of rice where each piece of rice is 100,000. Now times that by 20 or 30 times. That's how much money Ron Burkle has. Why haven't they loaned it to him? Is Diddy being cut out of short? Is he being cut off if everybody is really isolating him? Yo, I hope Diddy make it to trial. I really honestly do, right? Listen, I really honestly do think because at the end of the day, um, I don't know, this, uh, something's going on. They said another clue in his property portfolio as to why Diddy may not be rich, may not be as rich as assumed, they're not done dragging him. You know that's the best rich people shade when they be clowning each other for really being broke. Like, oh, how pedantic. <laughs> you have to take eight mortgages? <laughs> Darling, <laughs> Sean took eight mortgages. <laughs> anyway, right, Um, they said, Another clue in his in Diddy's property portfolio as to why he may not be as rich as assumed is the abandoned mansion on the outskirts of Atlanta in Sandy Springs, okay? Urban explorer Abandoned Southeast took images of the eight-bed Italian Baroque-style villa known as Casanarill, which showed the desolate interior and exterior, including a 60,000-gallon saltwater pool. Now, here's the one thing I want to say. Y'all know what Diddy was into? He might have been, listen, Diddy seems like he created experiences, right? And Cassie said that he would set up tripods um, surrounded by candles. Sounded to me like something off of the craft or um, what's that one show that used to be on the CW um, with the three witches? I forget, Charmed, right? Sounds to me like, cause they were, I was like, wait, you got three, filming angles and we in a circle and there's candles around. It sounds like it's about to be a blood sacrifice. Let me, let, me, let me get out of here. You know, everybody be like, yes, yeah, the freak off. I'd be in the corner like somebody about to get a blood sacrifice and it ain't going to be me. Y'all run. I will wait until I was by the door though. I will wait till I was by the exit and then I will warn everybody else. Cause there's a chance that if I warned everybody early, I might get trampled. I'm not the fastest runner. So I will do my due deal. I will do what I need to do to save my fellow man. But I just need to be right next to the exit. And then I'd be like, hey, y'all, I think they about to do a blood sacrifice. Run! And then you run over, right? So here's the thing, right? Um, I think Diddy created experiences. I think he had experiences like, um, I think he had experiences like, you know, do you want the Star Island experience? You know, he was selling experiences. Do you want this? Do you want the underground Grotto in LA? Or do you want the Taken a la Liam Nielsen um, freak off video where people are sitting in an abandoned Atlanta mansion shackled in a pool looking like, you know, just looking like like they just need like a, a Wawa sandwich and a 7-Eleven Big Gulp, just looking sad. And I don't mean to make light of, Travis, just go with the joke, right? I'm sitting there and then he's going to film and freak off like that. They're talking about, ha, 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 did he so broke? He ain't renovate this house. How do you know that wasn't one of his freak off experiences? Literally, like it'll be extra, but we can do the abandon. We can do the taken. Only ain't no Liam Nielsen coming. As a matter of fact, we're going to have a Liam Nielsen lookalike and we're going to take. 
we gonna take y'all. Y'all gonna see take that, took that, take the Liam Neeson impersonator. That's the real taking. <laughs> Those are the type of experiences that Diddy was selling. That's what I'm saying. Y'all don't know. Listen, listen, they said, according to the real estate listing, this is on the abandoned house. They had a sauna, a home th theater, and a, <clears throat> a secret room. I repeat, according to the real estate listing, it has sauna, home theater, and secret rooms. Yeah, that was the taking experience when little when when a Liam Neeson lookalike gets taken again. Did he was selling experiences? They said the identity of the current owner is unclear, but it's reported that Diddy is hoping to renovate it, although it wasn't able to get the necessary funding. Okay, what else are we doing? Listen, I hope this was listen. I hope this was informative. This might be why Diddy hasn't actually settled because according to the rich people, Diddy broke. Did he do it? I don't know. But we do know that look like Diddy. He go, I don't know what's going to happen because he owes so much money. How are you paying all this? How much is that? We'll see. We'll see. We'll see. All I know is Little Rod and all those girls better get to the bank ASAP and do some type of freeze on Diddy's accounts because, baby, I'm talking about he's moving money overseas. <laughs> baby, that money. <laughs> the bank might be like, we don't do wire transfers for less than 50,000, sir. I'm, I'm sorry. <laughs> Anyway, y'all, listen, I'm going live a lot today. Make sure you turn your notifications on. I got to go film and I got to go get to my connect and see what they can tell me about the Young Miami thing. But I'm telling you, it's going to be good. Young Miami is about to be caught in a huge lie. And baby, I'm bringing receipts. Oh, also, um, let's see. Let's see. Mimi Lewis, I already said thank you to you, but thank you again. AC, thank you so much for the super sticker. Blue Moon said, we love you, Tisa. Keep telling it. No, no diddy, no doubt. No diggity. Like to back it up. Okay. Also, Lindex said, Diddy, thank you for the super chat, by the way. Said Diddy is going to be named the sinking Titanic of the music industry. That's right. Lastly, Michelle Washington said, Tisa, I love how you tell stories. So animated and full of jokes. Keeps me coming back. Thank you so much, Michelle, Miss Washington. But I will see you guys later. It's going to be a heavy upload day, y'all. So prepare, prepare to have your feed spammed. All right, y'all. I'll see you on live later on today, probably in the next hour. Mwah. Talk to you later. Bye.